Hi everybody, Professor Gusimi here. In this component of the lecture, we will be discussing website structure. As usual, there are some recommended readings for this lecture. I encourage you to take a look. Now, the structure of your web page is actually really important for a number of reasons. What I'd like to do is first speak to what those reasons are, and then I'm going to try to define exactly what I mean by structure short term right here on this page. And then I'm going to, as we go through the lecture, talk a little bit more about what I mean by structure. The first thing that's important about having structure is findability. Web pages that are well structured, the HTML is reasonably organized, uh, element tags are being used appropriately, and so on, uh, are usually easier to find. That is to say, search engines can more appropriately map the content that's available on your web page to a particular search query that somebody injects into Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever search engine they're using. So that's great because if you're building a web service and you want people to uh, use your web app as an example, you want it to be easy to find through a search engine like Google. The second thing that's really important that you get from having a structured web page is accessibility. If you have, for example, some users of your web page who are visually impaired, the typical screen readers that folks who uh, have visual impairment will use tend to take advantage of the, the heading tags to help them structure and search through the information that they listen to on your web page. So for instance, if you made use of the appropriate header tags with nested subheaders and paragraphs, it's easier for a visually impaired person to navigate that content using a screen reader than if you just had a bunch of paragraph tags. The third thing is retention, which is if your content is properly structured, users can usually navigate it more effectively to find what it is they're looking for. And if they can find what they're looking for, they're likely to come back or to recommend you to a friend. If they can't find what they're looking for, they're going to navigate away and go to someplace else where they can. And the internet and the World Wide Web um, are sort of the ultimate version of sort of a free market in that sense, right? Anybody can compete with anybody else for the attention of the downstream users. So let's go through what the basic sections of a web document are so that as you're coming to structure your website or your web application, you have the major components that will make your thing easier to find, easier to access, and hopefully thereby easier to retain people on. So you should be familiar with um, some of the components of that template HTML document I've got on the right-hand side. You can see up here, once again, we have the doc type HTML. We have an HTML wrapper. And within it, we have two of the components that you've already seen. That's the head, which you can see has some meta and some title information. And then we have a body. Now, this body this time contains a whole lot of other tags within it. You can see the first tag is something called a header, not to be confused with a head. This header is what shows up at the very top of your website. Sometimes like a banner, an image, something like that is often used. Underneath that, we have a navigation bar as indicated by this nav. And then we have an unordered list that contains two hyperlinks to two different HTML pages. One is home, one is team. So this is like a navigation bar area. Underneath this, we have a main area. And we have two elements within the main area. We have this thing called an aside. This aside element is something that floats to the left or to the right, depending on how we configure our CSS. And then we have an article. And the article is sort of like the main content body that we want to present to the user. Let me come through in here and highlight each of these elements for you. Once again, the header is um, what goes at the top. The nav bar is a nav bar, right? It's what you use to get to other relevant places on the page. The main area is where the content is located. The aside contains content that's not maybe directly related to things, but is in a secondary capacity. And the article is where the main block of content resides. Last but not least, the footer is where we get usually that copyright information, uh, links to other kind of obscure documents that someone might want access to, legal information, and so on and so forth. These components of a website are probably pretty familiar to you because most websites are structured that way. I mean, they have a lot of shared components. If you were to take 
that exact same template that I showed you and stepped you through just a few minutes ago, and you were to do some very basic styling on it. So you can see here, for example, the header, I've attached a style background red. You can see now pretty easily what the header is just by me setting the background. And I've done that for several of the other sections, including um, the, nav, uh, the nav bar, the aside section, the article section, and the footer section. And so what you can see here is that although this isn't the most gorgeous web page, um, this has sort of the typical structure that you would expect a regular web page to have. And if you take advantage of some of these reserved tags, it will be an excellent way for the findability, accessibility, and ultimately the retention of your users to be optimized, which will hopefully make your web applications more successful. Now, what I'd like to do is take a few moments to speak about some of the other structural elements that will help you, in addition to what we've just discussed at the kind of skeleton level, some of the, the pieces of um, structure that get embedded more into your content or that govern your content. These are called non-semantic wrappers, and there's two of them. There's spans and there's divs. So let's speak about the span first. A span is an inline non-semantic element. You can think of it as something that sort of wraps parts of your content so that you can do things with it like style it, add some interactivity, make it so that when your mouse hovers over it, something cool happens. I've got an example here on the right-hand side. We've got a very simple paragraph tag here, and we've got some content, the king walked quickly. But I wanted to make it so that quickly was red, and so I just wrap it in this little span tag, set the color to red, and boom, we're done. We have the king walked quickly as a consequence with quickly in red. Okay, I can extend this, uh, or rather, moving away from span, which was an inline divider. We also have a block level wrapper called a div, okay? And divs are like spans, except that they're, they're used to group content that's related. That's the way to think about them. And they can also be used to, um, to create things that have really nothing to do with content, but could just be visual in nature. So what I've done here on the right-hand side, for example, is created this two-by-two two chessboard looking thing. And I've done that by simply taking uh, some different divs, as you see here, and nesting them. So I have here a top-level div. That's this first one. And the style of this div was set so that the height and the width was 200 pixels. Okay, that's the main wrapper here. And you notice that it has a solid gray body, that, uh, a solid gray border, I'm sorry, which you can see here on the periphery of this object. We've set the position to be relative, and we'll be speaking about positioning of HTML objects in a separate component, so don't worry about this yet. But within this div, we were able to place two other divs. And these two other divs, we set them as black boxes, and we positioned them accordingly so that we could get this nice uh, chess or checkerboard kind of aesthetic that you see on the right-hand side. So Div and span are, again, non-semantic wrappers. They allow you to group content so that you can do interesting extensions to your HTML and CSS. The main things I want you to take away from this lecture are that findability, accessibility, and retention will drive more user engagement and will make your web application more successful. The second thing is that websites do tend to share a lot of standard components. They tend to have nav bars. They tend to have footers. They tend to have main content. Uh, main content areas, and you should leverage those and use them because it will help with the findability, accessibility, and retention of your website. The third thing is you can style sections to make uh, components of your web page stand out. And in fact, as we transition now into speaking about CSS, that's what we're going to be speaking about primarily. How do we take that very rough, kind of ugly skeleton and do styling on it so that it's aesthetically pleasing, beautiful to look at, font scale, position scale, and so on and so forth. The last thing I want you to take away from this is that there are some tags here, specifically span and div, that help group a set of elements together, both in a block sense as well as an inline sense, to affect all entities that are contained within them as one. 